So if you're applying to medicine or dentistry, I'm gonna show you the things that move the needle the most, and you should place the majority of your focus on to maximize your chances and build the most competitive application. Not only am I gonna do that, I'll show you the order in which to do them and the context of what's going to be going on in your life that is going to, that you need to navigate so that you can make it as stress-free as possible, but also free up the focus to give it the attention it deserves to get it to a really high level to, level to be more competitive than all the other people applying. Because the mistake that most people make is that they think that it's a two or three months sprint whereas your people who are getting into you know your Oxford your Cambridge your King's College London's and the other competitive universities these are the guys who are starting their preparation at the start of year 12 or if they're at uni it's in their penultimate year as that year is starting is when they start their prep and it's not a two or three months ordeal it's a 18 to 24 month ordeal if you're starting in September around the time you start year 12 you'll be going on into the summer of not the year after but the year after after that, by the time you've finished your interviews and are getting ready to kind of realize your offers. So I'm gonna show you where to place your attention, but the first thing is give it the respect it deserves, give it the time it deserves, and if you want to get into a competitive medical or dental school, or these days it's so competitive that any medical school, you need to give it the respect and the time that it deserves to build a strong application. And not only it's about doing activity, it's about allowing the activities that you're doing for time that you're doing them to accumulate. Because whatever experiences you're doing, you need to allow time for those experiences to accumulate. You know, if you're doing a volunteering role, if you've been doing it for a year, that means that you've racked up a lot more hours and that means that naturally you'll have a lot more things to talk about, a lot more wisdom, a lot more exposure to the profession, whichever it is. And that is gonna help you build that knowledge and that understanding. And this is what forms the foundation of a good application because people have lived it, they've experienced it, and they're not just trying to blag it with a quick sprint that they did to kind of try and gather as much information as they can. That's what makes people the real deal. Okay, so what to do and when to do it. I'm gonna break it down into five things. The very first thing is what we call CV building and work experience. And throughout, I'm gonna link you to some other videos that are gonna go more in depth into that thing because instead of kind of overwhelming you with everything now i'll just tell you what you need to pay attention to the headline stuff and then you can zoom into each one as and when you get to that stage so as i say first thing cv building and work experience now this forms the foundation of your application if you do this well first of all you'll have racked up loads of experience so you'll tick that box when it comes to them seeing whether you've proven that you have the understanding and the commitment to that uh, subject that you want to study the second thing is it'll help you understand ethics and some of the things that come up in some of the exams that they test, which I'll talk about later. But also it'll help you have more to write about in your personal statement, which we're gonna talk about later. And when you, the biggest thing is when you come to interview, you will be the real deal if you get this right. Now it's important to start this preparation and start thinking about this. Like I say, when you start year 12, at least, at least do it in the kind of December or January coming after that. So as you go into the new year after starting year 12, or if you're a grad, your penultimate year of university. Now to build a good CV, you need to think of really a few things. One is experience, so exposure to the professional profession and the second is building character traits that would make a good doctor or dentist. So the work experience umbrella kind of covers three, maybe four broad things. The first is shadowing, where you are a fly on the wall in a hospital or a dental practice, and you are observing a doctor at work to gain an understanding of it. The second thing is volunteering. That's to show that you have, you know, that you have a caring nature, you're self-sacrificing, you're willing to give back to people and kind of show those traits that they want to see in people who are going to be future care providers. The next is paid work. Now paid work is brilliant for showing responsibility. Those other two things you kind of it's great that you're there and it's great that you're doing them but they're not kind of relying on you the same way that somebody say if you're looking after a shop or if you're a waiter or a waitress you know whatever that is. That third one is demonstrating a lot more responsibility than the other two because as a volunteer or maybe as a fly on the wall shadowing it doesn't really you don't have the responsibility where you have to be there the same way that you have a job where you're looking after an entire shop for example. So responsibility is a really big thing to demonstrate with paid work. Then finally, something like research or some sort of academics kind of falls under this umbrella. We could call it wider reading as well, whether you're attending talks or conferences. This is another thing on the academic side that it shows that you have interest 
in the profession. Now, alongside all of that, what I'll call broadly work experience, we have our CV building, and that's really extracurricular activities. And think of this as traits. So what kind of traits make a good doctor? What kind of traits make a good dentist? Is it working in a team or is it leading a team, for example? So if you do a sport and you're the captain, these are good examples of that. Is it dedication to something? So maybe you have played an instrument for, you know, five years and you can show that you can commit yourself to something like a five-year career, for example, a five-year degree that extends way beyond that. Or maybe you are learned a second language. Medicine is basically, and so is dentistry, it's basically all Latin based and you learn about 30,000 new words just from starting that. I think it's in the first year you learn that much. So can you show that you can understand another language and function on that level? So we've got an entire playlist, both for medicine and for dentistry, for everything you need to know about work experience, what it involves, and how to arrange it. Also on the Future Doc website, we've got a free resource for tracking your work experience and understanding whilst you're going through it what you need to get out of it. Whilst we're on the subject of Future Doc, if you would like our help with your application to medicine or dentistry, we have a program that takes you start to finish through the entire application to make sure that you manage it, not only in the most stress-free way that you can, but you can avoid overwhelm, you can understand what a really good application looks like and have someone keep you on track throughout so that you can you know, be as efficient with your time as possible so that the rest of the time you can focus on your school exams, on enjoying your life, so that basically you give your best, yourself the best chance of getting in. With last year being the highest number of people taking the UCAT ever, a really important exam, it is more competitive than ever. And the difference between people who do well and who don't is the people who start early and get the right sort of help. Once we run out of places, we'll be operating on a wait list only. So worth applying now so that you can avoid missing out and get that help that you need to get into your chosen medical or dental school. So like I say, that work experience and CV building should start really all the way far back as starting year 12 or starting that penultimate year of university. And it kind of carries on all the way throughout your application, acquiring all of that experience. Then there's the second phase of the application, which is what we call pre-exam prep. Now you'll have two things going on at this stage, and this is kind of around end of February sort of time that we really need to start shifting our focus and why it's important to have that other stuff squared away. We want to shift our focus towards exams. Now these are both UCAT and the academic exams. So whether it's you sitting your A-levels or your university exams, we need to be prepared so that we can focus equally in turn on both of those. Now what's gonna happen is the UCAT is probably one of the most important things. If you're a grad, you'll also be sitting the GAMSAT, which is around March sort of time, which you should have been preparing for in that period whilst you're doing all that work experience stuff. But the UCAT is kind of mid-July to the end of September. So if you haven't heard of it already, the UCAT is a big deal and a big exam that has everything to do with the application. So I will show you a guide for how to prepare here, but safe it to say, we need to start doing that early. Now, what happens, you prepare for the UCAT in three phases. So what we call, firstly, basically, our familiarization. Then we wanna get good at answering questions, and then we wanna get, get quick at answering questions, basically. But the first bit, the familiarization, we can start doing now, just like, because, the UCAT is kind of like an IQ exam done at very fast pace. So the same way that you wouldn't do a Sudoku at pace, but you would still do it as practice to get good at doing a Sudoku, you can start doing that sort of stuff now to get familiar with it, understand and start really getting your brain used to that way of thinking. Because what we want to do is almost apply that base layer. Imagine you're painting a wall, you apply several coats. You want to get that base layer in so you've got that familiarity starting, you're starting to understand it before we then shift gears to focus on uni or school exams. Because at that point, you'll start to have maybe some end of year exams or you'll have stuff that might distract your focus away. Which is why it's so important to have started all of things, these things working along in the background before we have to shift focus and kind of have no choice but to get distracted. That's why it's so important to start early to have this stuff going on before we shift focus to and get pulled away by exams. So then once our academic exams are out of the way, we're back on focusing on exam prep for the UCAT and we're probably racking up a lot more experience and all of those other things that we're talking about. Then eventually we come to phase three, which is the summer, which is what I call crunch time. Now this is when everything is gonna be happening. So we've talked about two of the important hurdles already, which is the work experience and the exam. This is when you're actually going to sit that UCAT exam. But also at the same time, you need to 
start preparing your personal statement. Now I do a great video here for how to, how to write a really good personal statement. Still important despite what people say. Yes, some universities don't use it, but they will use it sometimes to interview those universities. So it's really important to write a good one still because people think that, oh, because they don't use it for the selection, then it doesn't matter. But you could write a terrible personal statement and get through selection because they've not looked at it, but then get to interview and then they go, what the hell is this? We're not letting this person in. So don't listen to those people who say that you shouldn't pay attention to it. It's really important. Most universities use it, but even if no one ever looked at it, it's important for you formulating your own experience getting clear on why you want to study medicine or dentistry, but also it's good practice for when you go to interview and you need to explain all these things that you've done and what you've gained from them and why they make you a good doctor or dentist, that you've formulated those in your head and you understand clearly so that when you get put under the scrutiny of an interview, you can say it in front of them with confidence. So don't underestimate that. And then the final thing is that we're putting our application together. So that means choosing universities. Do not underestimate how important that is. We have many people who come to us on the Future Doc program who have not got in for so many years. So they've come to us for help. They maybe had you know two, three, four failed attempts and they've come to us to finally get in. And choosing the right universities is so important. We have a whole database on like all the little nitty gritty things that make a person's specific situation more suited to certain universities. But if you have a certain university in mind, you need to, again, this is why preparing early is so important. If you've got your heart set on Oxford, if you've got your heart set on a particular graduate entry university, you need to start tailoring your application to suit what they like early because otherwise this is what so many people do and why this last year so few people got in and had so many people that should have got in that didn't is because they leave all of this to cram into the summer and it becomes really stressful it means they don't have the time or the attention to focus on each of these individual elements and then they you know have to compromise and sometimes it means that they don't get to go for the really um, competitive medical schools sometimes it means that they jeopardize their chances of getting in at all and then they have to either go through clearing which is really stressful or reapply or you know go via the grad route which is much more competitive so this is what i call phase three which is crunch time so that is like i say sitting the ucat it's writing your personal statement it's submitting your application so those three things and if you haven't done the preparation before it might mean having to in a hurry, complete some work experience during that summer period where you've got all of that other stuff going on. And you can start to see now why there's a clear correlation between how early people start and the level of competitive university they tend to end up in based on that. So then in early September to mid-October is the window that UCAS opens that you can submit your application. So that's the culmination of all this stuff. And then you submit your application, but alas, the application isn't over. It is so important not to underestimate those interviews. I see it very often where students do really well in the UCAT and they get invited to all four out of their applications, they get invited to interview, but don't get a single offer because they've ignored all of that stuff. Now the interview, firstly, not to be underestimated and you need to be ready and that can go anything from kind of November all the way into May. So it's important to prepare and be ready to perform. You will get very little notice when the universities invite you to interview. It might be a week or two. Again, so many people who haven't thought about this aren't doing the prep ahead of time. They get kind of caught off guard, they're scrambling around, they're panicked and they go into the interview not very well prepared and don't do well because of it. On the Future Doc program, as soon as October the 15th usually is the deadline for UCAS, as soon as that hits, we start interview prep and it's really going all the way into April to make sure that people are at their peak because you, know, you have to be in the top 10% really to make sure that you get your place at university. But again, this goes back to the preparing early thing because your interview, how well you do, will be dictated by how much experience you've gained. For me, when I applied, you know, I went, I got into King's College London and to Cardiff for dentistry for Kings and medicine for Cardiff. And when I got to interview, I had loads of questions that if I would have spent two years preparing, I would have never thought of. But I relied on my real life work experience to tell stories and, and draw on experiences that I genuinely gained from putting in the hours that helped me get through that. And I could tell the moment when those interviewers said, okay, I think we're gonna offer this guy a place because I could see that 
when I was telling them these stories, they, they, you know, they could tell that I was the real deal. And that's how we build a really strong application. So look, the moral of the story is that these things deserve respect. They are over a long period and starting early will maximize your chances. If you want to get a free timeline that we've made, the future.program, if you go to our free resources page on our website, you can download the timeline to help you understand and start planning. But if you would like some help with your application to make sure that you stay on course, you focus on the right things at the right time, and you kind of make it as stress-free as possible, you can check out the future.program and you can submit an application here. We have limited spaces and as since we announced that we are capping the number of people on the program, we have nearly almost sold out and then after that we'll be operating on a wait list so come early to make sure you maximize your chances of getting into your chosen medical or dental school but if you do apply and get a place we would love to have you and help you write your own story thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video